Okay, whatever. Was the president's call to the Secretary of State appropriate? Look, my total focus has been on this moment today, getting the vote out here in Georgia. I've been crisscrossing the state for nine weeks. That's our focus. Georgians need to... Bro, Georgians are so dumb, dude. I'm sorry. Georgia Republicans, and this goes to Republicans all around the f country, but like, you're so stupid. Like, you're such a stupid hog that you can literally look at someone like kelly leffler who will just like go out and like take a photo with a kkk guy oopsie and then you're like yeah she's a real one why because she wore a denim hat with the with the uh, american flag on it you know went out and did some uh, shot some of those plates dude that's why wow dude she's so f american dude you're literally voting for a billionaire wife who made a load of money during this pandemic while simultaneously denying the pandemic you're such a dumb f moron if you turn around and you're like well another the other guy is black <laughs> so we got to vote for her i love guns and i love god and i hate the gays and then and then republicans are like all right fuck it yeah look this is her fucking own team dude Kelly lovelers WNBA team atlanta dream wearing shirts promoting her opponent warnock <laughs> I want to watch this now, this video that they did on Kelly Leffler. Apparently, it's like, it shows her background real well. Now this her, who is Kelly Leffler? Narrated by Natalie Portman. What the fuck? What the fuck is Natalie Portman doing in this video, dude? That's crazy. Okay, Natalie. Pro-Trump, pro-military, and pro-wall. That's Kelly Leffler, an unelected incumbent Republican senator from Georgia, whose shady financial maneuverings and refusal to acknowledge the actual winner of the presidential election have made headlines nationwide. As Leffler's re-election bid goes to a runoff against Democrat Raphael Warnock in January 2021, let's take a look at the career of a WNBA co-owner turned legislator on behalf of a state that did not vote for her. Out of school, Leffler worked at Toyota for four years, where according to her LinkedIn, she was a district account manager. From there, she hopped to Citibank, then to William Blair, an investment banking company, and then eventually to Intercontinental Exchange, or ICE where she ended up marrying the fucking CEO. She quickly climbed the company ladder, securing a seat as a top lieutenant for the company's CEO, Jeff Sprecher. In 2004, Leffler married that CEO ah! and climbed the ladder again, ah! <laughs> taking over as head of marketing shortly after. While at ICE, Leffler and Sprecher's company provided a platform for, as Mother Jones noted, highly speculative, unregulated energy trading that ended up causing an Enron-like scandal and costing residents of Georgia millions of dollars. In 2013, ICE bought the New York Stock Exchange for over $8 billion. Along the way, Leffler bought a minority stake in the WNBA team, the Atlanta Dream, before becoming a full-time co-owner in 2011. Bro just buys the stock exchange? Yeah, bro. You know, the everyday, the common man. The kind of person that you need in a position of power that will truly represent the interests of Georgia. The woman who's fucking married to the guy who's like, I'm gonna buy the stock exchange. Like, come on, dude. I'm gonna buy the WNBA team. Like, she was literally fucking bored, okay? She was bored. And was like, maybe we'll get some uh, insider information that will help us with some trades. And has done nothing. Like, literally, just all she's done is that. And there is not a, there is not a better representation of someone who was like comically evil and out of touch than someone like Kelly Leffler. David Perdue too. Like, that's why I was saying, uh, it's something that I said about Kelly Leffler and David Perdue that got like misconstrued by people in Georgia uh, and, and uh, frustrated some of the fucking young Zoomers who are super woke was when I said Kelly Loeffler is not like KKK racist. She's just like rich white lady racist. I'm not saying that people in KKK are fucking poor. Of course not. The KKK is ideologically white supremacist. Kelly Loeffler is just like, you know, regular racist, not like, you know, there is a supremacy to the white uh, existence and like, we must preserve a future for our, our, our white children or some shit. Like, she's not that kind of racist. So like, you gotta remember, like there is a nefarious, uh, there, there's still a level of bigotry there that is like, seemingly acceptable but the reason why she was fucking portrayed with uh or or photographed accidentally with a fucking kkk member is literally because georgians are kkk racist okay some of the georgians are literally kkk racist that's it it's at the heart of the fucking confederacy these motherfuckers look at that and go oh yeah she's one of us she's good okay that's what i was trying to describe and people got mad at me. Same with fucking David Perdue. Like, these people don't even know, like, the racial slurs to, to say appropriately. Like, remember when David Perdue tried to fucking do the Kamala Mama 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 
la 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 whatever so many years in congress you've never heard david purdue do some shit like that why do you think he did that why do you think he did that because he's trying to do trump he's trying to do the trump thing that's why they're literally larping as like more racist than they actually are like overtly racist so they can get votes that should frustrate you even further than like a legitimately racist person running. You can portray yourself as more racist than you actually are when you are already racist, that like, that will be a benefit to you. Oh, this was it. But the most insidious thing that Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden are trying to perpetrate and Bernie and Elizabeth and Kamala or what Kamala or Kamala, 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 Kamala. I like this is a dude who is literally, you know when you're a kid and you learn a dirty word, fucking, you know, seven years old, eight years old, and you learn a dirty word and you want to say it, you want to find a way where you can say it? That's literally what he's doing. Where he's like, oh, I know this is going to be racist, but uh, I did not think this through. So I'm just going to say, oh, she's got a weird sounding name, right? Kamala, Mala, Mala, right? He can't even say it with his fucking full chest. The reason why he's doing this is literally because like those hogs like that. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. See? See? That's why. Because they laughed. Cause they're all fucking brain dead. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. She got weird sound and name. <laughs> yeah, he said it right. Like he said, Kamala or Kamala, Mala, Mala. It's like weird. It's like virtue signaling, but for racism. And like, obviously you have to be racist to be able to virtue signal for racism, but he's literally like heightening his racism so he can win because that's what fucking works for republicans and that is crazy dude oh uh, yeah leffler did this shit too where her fucking campaign literally darkened warnock's skin in the videos her campaign literally darkened radical liberal Raphael warnock's skin in the videos and it's also clip chimp to like a degree that i've never seen like this is like old school LSF clip chimping, okay? It's like one of my Hasanabi out of context videos. Like it's literally that level of clip chimp. If you're a poor homosexual, you can fucking rot. I don't give a shit. So the funniest part about this entire process is that Kelly Luffler is very clearly the exact like swamp rat that Donald Trump claims he hates despite the fact that he is also a swamp rat himself but at least donald trump does the racism he does a good act he puts on a good act for the hogs like oh yeah these guys the mexicans they're rapists you know kelly loeffler can't even do the racism right even a cartoonish and almost childish attempt at being racist is enough for the hogs to be like oh yes thank god thank god thank fucking god she said it Thank God, brother, she's on the side of justice. Unlike radical liberal Raphael Warnock, who's been a part of this community for decades and is an actual pastor, she's the real goddamn American. Why? Because she's fucking white, and that's it. And she's Republican, and she's running against the black guy. In 2019, she applied to succeed incumbent Senator Johnny Isaacson, who resigned from the post, citing health reasons. Although Leffler wasn't Trump's first choice, he wanted Doug Collins. She was tapped by Georgia Governor Brian Kemp for the position, where she's been serving the American people ever since. It's unclear if they want to be served by her, considering she's now in a runoff election, but nonetheless, she is Georgia's first female senator in 98 years. That's so funny. Like, Georgia's first female senator in 98 years. Girl power, baby. That's why neoliberal capitalist identity politics is so dumb, by the way. This is the reason why it's dumb as fuck. Girl boss. CNBC notes, Leffler is by far the richest member of Congress, sharing a net worth of about 500. Now it's a billion. Now they're officially, I believe, Kelly Leffler, as of like this year, her and her husband, since that video, have doubled their net worth. Yeah. Since that video came out. Since that fucking video came out, Kelly Loveler and her husband doubled their net worth and are now a billionaire, dude. I mean, she's a everyday. She's a commoner. She's just a, a regular old single billionaire. You know, it's just one billion. It's not like she's not like she's a 10 billionaire, dude. A novel coronavirus ignited an outbreak of a deadly disease called COVID-19 in China in December of 2019. The disease spread quickly with the first case in the US occurring the following month. By March of 2020, the COVID-19 outbreak was in its nascent stage, just beginning to take hold in the US. Then in early 2020, Leffler and her colleagues sat through some closed door meetings. Right after those meetings, Leffler sold a bunch of stocks, a whole bunch. Directly before the market took a nosedive, she sold, in total, stocks valued up to $18.7 million. 
That's $18.7 million. She dumped her retail stocks and bought shares in DuPont, which produces medical supplies. Instead of warning the American people after getting vital information, she offloaded millions in stocks and then publicly said this. The good news is the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, jobs are growing. Our president has done a fantastic job making sure that we're in the best position to manage through this situation. <coughs> However, Leffler claims the sales were completely out of her hands. She claims the transactions were carried out by her and her husband's financial advisor without their knowledge. You sold over a million dollars in stocks in your own personal portfolio before the market went down. Were you trading on inside information about what was coming? Well, I'm, I'm really glad you asked, Ed, because I do want to set her fucking house is so big, it's echoing. Do you guys remember when we watched this interview live? Her house is so large. She's not even in the living room. This is like her interview room. And it's echoing, motherfucker. To be fair, you can't blame her for selling her stocks. The bad thing is that she lied about it to the public. No, I can blame her for selling her stocks, brother. No, I, I absolutely can. I think it's bullshit that like uh, our, our members of Congress get to fucking act on information that's not publicly available. I already hate the fucking stock market to begin with. It should be literally illegal. Unfortunately, it's not literally illegal. There are, I guess it's very hard to actually prosecute it. Literal definition of insider trading. Like she is operating on information that's not publicly available to make a decision on which stocks to buy or sell. And it is literally illegal. It, like, yeah, Martha Stewart went to fucking jail for it. Like, if that's not insider trading, like, nothing is insider trading. Do you understand? Oh, there's a David Perdue one as well. But the most Thank you. Who is David Perdue? Let's take a look. The most insidious thing that Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden are trying to perpetrate and Bernie and Elizabeth and Kamala or what? Kamala or Kamala, 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 Kamala. I don't know. That's David Perdue, a Republican incumbent senator from Georgia who looks and acts like a bad guy in a Disney Channel original movie. If that movie was about insider trading and the horrors of capitalism. As Purdue's Senate re-election bid goes to a runoff against Democrat John Ossoff in January 2021, let's take a look at the career of a lifelong CEO turned U.S. Senator who, instead of warning the American public about the coronavirus, capitalized on it. In 1992, Purdue became senior vice president for Sara Lee, a food processing and distribution company which had expanded dramatically acquiring companies like Haynes, Coach, and Playtex. On Purdue's watch, the bloated company began to restructure, moving American jobs to China. 9,900 jobs at Sara Lee were eliminated and four of its plants in Georgia were shut down. As the company was thriving in Asia, Purdue prospered while his fellow Americans back home suffered. Regardless of the failures and successes, Purdue always came out on top. Tax returns reviewed by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reveal that over 10 years, Purdue earned 55 million. In 2014, Purdue- But he's got a denim, hey man, he's got a Canadian tuxedo, brother. He's fucking salt of the earth David Purdue, brother. You don't understand. He's got fucking bootstraps, brother. Meanwhile, he's like literally making money off of uh, firing people, okay? And guess what, guys? We watched this happen, okay? When Mitt Romney ran against Obama, we watched- what moderate Republicans look like and how they get fucking owned. Mitt Romney still absolutely without a doubt in his campaigning heightened the uh, blackness of Barack Obama and whatnot and talked about welfare spending and Obama phone and shit like that, right? But he himself was a respectable moderate Democrat. I mean, a, a respectable moderate Republican, sorry. And, and guess what? When you're a respectable, moderate Republican, all of a sudden, your, your elevators for your fucking cars come up and you get fucking owned. Meanwhile, this motherfucker's got like, you know, he's raking in 22 million and shit, but guess what? He does the racism, brother. He's doing it every now and then. He's got the fucking denim shirt on. You know he's real. He's one of us, brother. Purdue ran for Georgia Senate seat and won. He said he was going to bring the perspective of the working person to Washington. Yeah, he's bringing the working perspective to Washington. Like, can you imagine a dude who is literally, like, he worked for fucking Reebok, dude. This guy is bringing the working class perspective to Washington. Fuck me. Hundreds of working persons fired from Georgia-based Sara Lee plants he shut down years prior. In the Senate, Purdue has questioned the fact that there is a scientific consensus on global warming. 
When Trump appointed Scott Pruitt to the EPA, Purdue said, outside of eliminating the EPA altogether, Scott Pruitt is the next best thing. He also urged Trump to remove the U.S. from the Paris Climate Accord. It's clear why, though. Purdue has taken at least $184,000 from the oil and gas industries. On healthcare, Purdue has repeatedly claimed insurance should always cover pre-existing conditions. Health insurance should always cover pre-existing conditions <laughs> for anyone, period. Yeah, right. Words are great, and just like his president, Purdue knows some of the best ones. However, he doesn't actually believe them. PolitiFact rated his claim flat out false. As a lawmaker, Purdue has voted four times to repeal protections for pre-existing conditions. Which what a strange take. Oh, so when you're running on pre-existing condition protection, you run as though you care about, uh, you know, Georgians and their health. But when it comes down to, you know, legislating, you're absolutely, without a doubt, trying to fucking yeet that shit. How do you vote for this guy? Jumping to January 2019, Purdue became the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power. But something fishy was afoot. About a month prior to taking the post, Purdue conspicuously bought up about $290,000 worth of stock in BWX Technologies, a firm that has lucrative contracts with the U.S. Navy supplying nuclear components and fuel for submarines and aircraft carriers. By January 9th of 2020, Purdue had sold off the position for a hefty profit of up to about $50,000. Geez, if I didn't know any better, I might think that Purdue allegedly traded stocks based on inside information. And wouldn't you know it, this might not be the only instance. In January of 2020, as the coronavirus was about to take the U.S. and world by storm, Purdue... Remember when the dude Remember when the dude was like, in the chat earlier, was like, Oh, I don't understand. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, trading on information that you're privy to as a fucking senator. Yeah, this is why it's fucking bullshit, dude and a handful of senators received a classified briefing on the spread of the virus from the Trump administration. After the meeting, Purdue sold off up to $825,000 in personal stocks. The same day, he bought stock in a company that supplies PPE. Meaning, instead of warning the American public about the- Wow, that's so weird, dude. Wow, that's so strange. I wonder why he did that. Probably just really smart investing, dude. The obvious dangers that were to come, Purdue made sure to line his pockets prior to hundreds of thousands of American deaths. As of the publication of this video, Purdue has not apologized. Not only did he not apologize, but he fucking kept misinforming Georgians. Purdue is the guy who also uh, told other friends or his own, uh, his own like insider business owners in a private closed door meeting, he may or may not have informed other business owners about the damages of the impact of coronavirus while literally lying to the American people. To his fellow Georgians or the rest of the American people for this craven financial transaction. In October of 2020, as Purdue launched a re-election campaign, his Democratic opponent, John Ossoff, called him out on this. Well, perhaps Senator Purdue would have been able to respond properly to the COVID-19 pandemic if you hadn't been fending off multiple federal investigations for insider trading. It's not just that you're a crook, Senator. It's that you're attacking the health of the people that you- Guess what? After this, he was like, yeah, I don't need to fucking ever do a debate with this clown again and literally stop doing debates. To represent- he doesn't have to! Purdue's investment activity during his one term in the Senate has raised some eyebrows, to say the least. The New York Times reported that he made 2,596 trades in stocks, bonds, and funds during his first term in office, sometimes reporting 20 or more transactions in a single day. The Times found that Purdue's transactions accounted for nearly a third of all senators' trades reported in the past six years. In one of the most damning transactions, Purdue was tipped off by the CEO of Cardlytics, a financial company, where he once served on the board. Bro, After this is literally an email. They have the fucking emails. Like, you know, let me just say something here, okay? Like, he, he's literally like r slash Wall Street bet style day trading at this point. But obviously, if you day trade like this, then you always win because you're day trading on information that's literally not allowed, like that no one else knows, okay? Only people within the company know. Now, in order to clap someone on insider trading, you need a certain set of information. One of the most significant pieces of information that you can use as evidence is not just like your positions or how suspicious the timing of your fucking trade was, but also literally the fucking email correspondence with someone who works at that company 
at a fucking executive level. Receiving a cryptic email about upcoming changes from the company's CEO, Purdue sold off more than $1 million worth of stock. The Times notes, after the company's stock price bottomed out in March at $29, Mr. Purdue bought back a substantial portion of the shares that he had sold. They're wow, that's crazy. What? Oh no, they literally did have evidence, dude. There's like an email correspondence. Oh, now my trading God. at around $120 per share. Like it's nuts that both of the candidates have insider trading scandals. Like it blows my mind. Like absolutely blows my fucking mind that Georgians are literally voting. Georgian Republicans are literally voting for two candidates that got caught insider trading, dude. It is a fucking insane. Yo, they disgust me, dude. They're such scum. Like these, these uh, trumpet dipshits, they're so fucking nasty. Like, because when Democrats end up accidentally fucking doing a thing, that thing happens to be on the side of justice or more equality for Americans. And guess what? People fucking like that shit, dude. Turns out people like getting money. Turns out people like social security. Turns out people would absolutely, without a fucking shred of a doubt, love Medicare for all.